<laughs> so, when and how did you decide to become a principal? Right, well, I started teaching in 1989. I went to a school called Morayfield, which is a big school. And I didn't really want to be at the big school straight away. I wanted to be out west. So in my second year, I went to a place in North Queensland called Rossville. And there I was a second teacher. Um, and I started to have some experiences as a principal because uh, only a two teacher school. And so I decided from there, look, I'll give this a little bit more of a go. And I continue that. And I went on to do another school called Laura, which is an indigenous school, which is one teacher. And I was there for another three years. And I think that's when I thought I'd like to be a principal. There you go. What key things in your life did you do? What key things in your life do you think led to your decision? Well, I was brought up in another country for all my primary school years in Papua New Guinea. So my par parents were quite adventurous. So we used to travel around a fair bit go to national parks, go to Kokoda Trail, all those sorts of things. So we did a lot of different things. So we were pretty out there. And I think that's what sort of got me into doing something a little bit different. So coming back to Australia, I always knew that that adventurous spirit would continue. And that's why I travelled all around Queensland. There you go. What makes you a good fit for this work slash profession? Um, a good sense of humour. I think you've got to have a really good sense of humour. You've got to like teaching. But the most important thing you've got to like kids. So I really enjoyed seeing kids change and grow. Um, but as a principal, you could see the bigger impact you could have in uh, in a community. So that was probably what was exciting me that I could change the way and make things better for a community. Did you ever doubt your ability to be a principal? Oh, always. <laughs> You always have to really challenge yourself and you know, challenges always turn into opportunities. So I think, you know, I, I now work with my leadership team as a principal. So I'm always talking um, and negotiating with the leadership team around new challenges. And I guess that's, that's part of becoming a, a good leader. So, hmm. um, so if what, what helped you become more confident? Um, I think making lots of mistakes and you know not giving up on those mistakes and, and utilizing those mistakes to not to make them again and, and to ensure that you know you're going in the right direction. Uh, I'm pretty competitive as well, so I liked I like our schools or my schools that I was involved in to be the best schools. And when I say the best schools, I mean um, that they're doing the best that they can, not necessarily comparing it to another school down there. What, if any, aspects about this work are different from what you initially imagined? Well, it is, um, to start off with, I wanted to be a PE teacher, so I never imagined I'd be in a principal role. And as I said, I just, I did fall into it. Probably the, the big aspect that started it off for me was I always thought a principal was authoritarian, you know, had to be the boss. Um, and it's not that at all, it's completely the opposite. You, you know, you've got to uh, have good people skills, be able to negotiate things quite a bit. So there's a lot of things there that I, as a child, you know, you, you reflect and look at what a principal was like when you were a child. And, and now when you look at it uh, as, as an adult, it's quite different and also experiencing that. What impact did this have on your fit or enjoyment or desire to do this work? probably wasn't a big impact because um, what I thought it was was completely the opposite and that's who I am was I was the, more of a negotiator rather than an authoritarian type of leader so it didn't have a big impact on me it was quite a, a good feeling to know that I was on the right track. Hmm. How did you manage this difference in what you expected and what you actually experienced? As I said it didn't really impact me um, so I more or less was very happy in the role because it's what I what I thought was the right way to go in the in the, in the past so it um, it was a lot easier what is important about this work for example what do you find satisfying uh, I think I've said it already I, I like seeing um, you know the spark a child has when they when they've got something when they've learned something and seeing that growth over time but also having a big impact in a community. Um, you know, like 
sustainability is a big thing in communities at the moment and schools mm. and having kids organize and plan that with the teachers to to change the whole community is quite significant so yeah. what do you value about your work i value um probably people's opinions not just staff not just the children's voice but also community voice i think it's really important that you value everyone's got an idea or an idea starts with somebody and you've got to try and connect with as many people as possible so that no one's left behind and everyone knows what the plan is mm. what advice would you give someone who is considering this career well you've got to like teaching you've got to like learning and you've got to like um, people so I think all those ingredients and, and be prepared to make mistakes and it's okay to make mistakes and like I said earlier turn a challenge into an opportunity mm. Very nice.